In Open Building Designer, a grid system can be created that is both in the horizontal and the vertical plane. And the grid system can appear automatically inside all our drawings, including details. And in the details, the bubbles are shifted to fit just outside the detail area. The grid system dialog box can be attained from the button in the lower portion of open buildings next to the floor selector. Grids, like falls, are stored in the BB Floormaster DGN file. These are set at work set specific levels because most commonly the grids are common across a project. Like the floor manager, multiple sites or multiple buildings can be set up per work set and multiple grids can also be set up. Let's have a look at how we go and set up a grid. So we can see in the bottom of our model here, we already have a grid displaying inside our model. The grid systems manager defines our grid. So if we hit this button and open the grid systems manager, you can see we already have a grid system set up here. It's called platform. However, we could add a secondary grid and we have multiple different types. We have orthogonal grids, radial grids, and two and three axis sketch grids. The grid system already in here called platform is a type orthogonal grid. And that means we get a horizontal and vertical axis. And these are defined by spacings, distances away from the first grid. They are also given numbers in the horizontal by default and letters in the vertical by default. And of course, we can change these by double clicking in and making an amendment. We could also add a grid line to this system as well. And it'll look at the last grid number and add the next sequential number. It will also look at previous spacings and add that as well. We might choose to alter that spacing for this one only and make it three meters or 3000 millimeters away. And you can see the preview over on the right hand side. Up in the top with the grid settings, we can apply a rotation we can choose a building, depending if we have this building or another building from our floor manager. And we can choose the start and end floor names. In this case, we're using RL values to define the start and end of our grid. After making a change, like adding this additional grid line, we hit OK. And you can see the new grid line has been added, plus also the amendment to the text. The floor manager assists with the uh, creation of uh, grids, not only in plan, but uh, importantly in elevation as well. Let's have a look at how this works. Over here in the floor manager, we could set up a new building. So if we expand our floors out like so, we have one called platform with some set elevations in play. We could add a new building and call it site building. And we can add some floors to that. We can use the default name of floor one if we choose to, and then add its elevation. Once you add the first floor, you can continue adding floors and change its elevation by changing the floor to floor height. You can see there the relative elevation and the elevation change accordingly. Hit apply and close. To choose a floor, you can go and scroll up and down to choose your different sites or buildings or engineering features with inside this particular work set. When back in the grid manager, we could add a new grid. And in this case, let's have a look at a three axis sketch grid. The sketch grid temporarily opens a file and displays our model in plan. So we can sketch over the top of our model using things like lines, arcs, and uh, B spine curves. The sketch grid 
also provides a new dialog box that allows the sketching capabilities. Let's have a look at how this works. What we could do is say we want it to revolve around site building and we can have it change or operate the grid, the grid operate from floor one to floor two. With a sketch grid, we can hit modify. With a sketch grid, we can come down to the grid lines and hit add modify. And a special dialog box will allow us to sketch a grid. So we have three axes we can create on here. We have axis one, two, and three. Axis one takes the form of letters. Axis two takes the form of numbers. Axis three allows us to define what we need to. So let's have a look at axis one. We have the ability to draw a grid. So let's say building is out here on the left. We can place our first grid line down. We can then place a second grid line if we choose to. You can see the grid bubbles then sequentially add to the next letter. Alternatively, we can use move, copy, rotate, move parallel items over here. So let's say we were to copy this grid one, two, three times. You can see the sequential lettering there. Alternatively, we may like to predefine some lines on our screen and use these to create grids out of. So we can use this button here, change our to axis two, and use this button here to convert those into grid lines. This also works with B-spline curves. And then we could choose to add a third grid if we want to, and then define our own characters for the bubbles. Once finished, we can say finish. And our grid system is now added to the grid systems dialog box. And we can say OK. So now we can see our grid for the platform here and our grid for our sketch building over here. At the base of our interface is, is where our, our grid controls are located. The grid controls allow us to adjust when we display the grid. For example, when we select a certain floor or whether we show all buildings and all floors. So let's have a look ahead. And when we select a floor, say in our new site building, we have the option of changing what visibility we'd like to see, which grids we'd like to see visible and which ones not. So for example here, we may only want to see the sketch grid visible. Just zooming out, it'll just refresh and we can see only the sketch grid visible. Alternatively, we can turn those on and we can look at it following the active floor. So that means when we move from floor to floor, let's say we choose RL3 in the platform, it only shows RL3 grid. And because these two share the same elevation, if I choose floor one, it'll show both. We can also show the full grid for all buildings by altering the different states here, or alternatively, the full grid just for the active building, which is this one here. Or alternatively, disable all grid display in our 3D model. You can say follow the active floor and set your floor selector back to none is also another method of not showing any grids as well. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.